What is your favorite, holy crap, this actually works, trick? Story one. Read in a tween magazine, might have been American Girl or something similar. Years and years ago, a tip to help you fall asleep where you slowly tense all your muscles as much as you can, then release the tension all at once. I was amazed at how much more relaxed I felt when I tried it. When I was in junior high, our drama teacher told us a story about how Albert Einstein used to fall asleep. I'm not sure how true it is, but I still do it to this day if I'm super stressed or just can't sleep. You start at the toes and work your way up. You tense the toes for 5 to 10 seconds, release, and do it again, the entire foot. Then the calf, knees, thighs, so on and so forth, until you get to the top of the head. I fell asleep in minutes. I have another sleep one that I learned in a sleep study lab. They cannot give us stuff to fall asleep, so they taught us a trick that has worked every time without fail. Varying stimulants gave me an edge in school and at work, in the film business. Here goes. In a pitch black room, lie on your back and have a staring contest with the dark. Fight to blink as long as you can, and within five to six minutes, you will be asleep. When I travel or take a nap, I use a sleep mask and t-shirt to stimulate the darkness. Your eyes have to be open. How it was explained to me by the intern, when your eyes see only darkness for an interval, it triggers a very powerful sleep cascade in the brain. This has been my secret weapon since I learned it 20 years ago. I tried this, and my toes cramped when I tried to tense my foot. How really the effect I had in mind. Story 2. If you spill candle wax on a carpet, you can get it out by running an iron over it with a damp towel in between. I was so baffled I almost felt like spilling more wax. Use low heat, make sure the towel is damp enough, keep the iron constantly moving, and most importantly, don't blame if you light your carpet on fire. Please Google it first. Step 1 actually uses a butter knife to get the big clamps out, and there are a few other disclaimers. Years ago, my sister and I were at our parents' home visiting for a holiday, and we decided to liven things up by drinking a bit of a lot. My sister wasn't much of a drinker in those days, and she got pretty buzzed off of a few drinks. My parents had recently bought some really nice couches. Their spill-prone children had moved out years ago, so they started spending real money on nice things for their home. My sister was really into candles and thought the time was ripe to light a few in the living room. Everything was going swimmingly until I was in the kitchen mixing two more drinks when I heard an intense squeal of despair from my sister. I rushed into the living room to find her holding one of the candles, trembling with fear. She had tipped the candle over and spilled the wax onto my parents' brand new couches. We both panicked a little bit and many methods to remove the dried wax failed miserably. After an hour or two, we finally found an online article outlining a very similar method as the one above. Instead of using a brown paper bag in place of cloth, out of options, we located an old, barely used iron in the laundry cabinet and gave it a try. Miraculously, it worked. My sister cried when the wax finally came up. We were both of age to drink and probably would have lived to see another day had we just admitted to our parents the truth of what had happened. It was years before we finally admitted the truth to our mother. She quietly listened to our tale and in no minced words told us that we would, in fact, have been disowned and banned from their home had we not found a very obscure cleaning tip. So this is a helpful tip after all. Also, don't light fires in another person's home when drinking. Who knew, right? Story 3. If your nose is stuffy and you can't get it cleared, just do 10 push-ups and it will clear right up. You can blow your nose over and over, but for some reason, this actually does a better job of clearing it up. I had no idea how it could work at first, so I was skeptical, but somehow it genuinely does work. Your nose plugs up as a bodily function. It's not the virus that does it. This is why normally one is plugged in and the other isn't. When you get your heart moving, your body needs more oxygen now, which is more important for survival than the work on your sinuses, so it opens. This is also why in a minute you'll be plugged up again when your heart rate settles. Being active opens your nose. Not much different from pseudoephedrine stuff. Both exercise and the meds stimulate the orthosympathic nervous system, and that will open it. Clogging and feeling sick happens after an activity, so don't go lying on a couch because you feel so much worse. You do need some extra sleep, but try to be active during the day, and a common cold is not so bad. Good advice until you realize you have to sit down for like four hours at a time for work and have no way to be active. Story 4. Turning electronics off and then on again magically fixes many problems. Clearing memory of erroneous data and making an application do its work again tends to do that kind of like taking a test and then doing a similar test immediately after if you fail. In the 1990s, I worked in a flight control system for a military aircraft, i.e. plane will crash without this working correctly machine, and we had someone on another aircraft system who felt our system should be able to reset or restart our system whenever it seemed fit, as opposed to trusting the quadruple redundant system that had been designed from the ground up to handle faults and errors. All our senior engineers thought it was a very bad idea to reset a flight control system in flight and voice this in no uncertain terms. Thankfully, they won out. The other fellow felt slighted by this. Ugh. Psst. Let's be honest. Does your room look dull as sh Yeah, well, most do. Luckily, I just launched Rufus Rugs. Custom, hand-tufted rugs. And no, this isn't some BS dropshipping company. We have a warehouse in Canada where me and my friends hand-tuffed every single rug. So if you're looking to bring your room to life with some awesome anime rugs, or literally anything you can think of, we can get it done for you. From Rick and Marty to The Last Airbender, we've got you covered. Hit the link in the description to get a free quote. Story 5. 
had a parasitic drain on the truck and the fuse and relay panel were way up under the dash. I figured whatever was causing the drain would probably make the fuse or relay hot, so I shot the temperature gun at them all. Sure enough, one was 15 degrees hotter. Turns out the clutch for the AC compressor was stuck on the whole time. I knew a Sparky whose entire job, for about a year, was going around and pointing a high-resolution thermal camera at power grid electrics and flagging trouble and potential trouble components. At first, he liked it because it was almost zero work for him. He was an experienced electrician who knew what he was looking at and a contractor, so the utility company sent one of their guys out to unlock and to open everything for him. He eventually quit because he was tired of driving all over the state. If you want to save some money on these types of problems, go to Harbor Freight or Princess Auto and buy a $20 multimeter. Spend an hour on YouTube to learn how to use it. You would be surprised how simple a lot of these problems are to solve. Story 6 It is always way too hot when I try to fall asleep, but I can't sleep with open windows in the winter, so I keep a couple of oranges frozen outside the window and I just toss one into bed. Night snack keeps me cool without having to get out of bed. Win-win unless you fall asleep and crush the orange, but at least you got some sleep, so that's still kind of a win. I thought I'd make things clearer, so here are answers to some common questions. I rarely eat them before sleep. It's either breakfast or a snack if I wake up at 3 a.m. My teeth are fine. Ice packs would work as well, but you can't eat them and it doesn't feel as natural. Fans work, but I have a bad habit of ruining them. It's not as good as under blanket cooling anyways. I like to keep them in my armpits, but not always. Sometimes they just roll around in bed, sometimes I put one on my belly button and pretend I'm a giant teeing up my ball for a galactic game of golf. This is really weird, but you can eat the orange in your shower in the morning as well. Story 7 my mom loves to collect containers to store random stuff, and converted me to do also, and both of us were stumped on how to get rid of the adhesive leftover from labels. I went online and found a post that said a mixture of olive oil and baking soda will take the glue right off. I kind of laughed at it, thinking it was another joke post, because how can baking soda and oil, two items we consume every day, be used to remove something like adhesives? Still, there was no real alternative since neither of us wanted to go buy Goo Gone because of the stench that we tried it out. To our surprise, the mixture worked like a charm, and all of the adhesive and stick residue came right off after letting the mixture sit in the containers for a bit. Now we have drawers full of containers full of various spices and tools that once held other spices, snacks, and foods. Story 8. Diatomaceous earth actually solved my two-year bedbug problem and it cost $8. How did I use it? I used a duster to spread it. You can pick one on Amazon, just search for diatomaceous earth duster. Just pick any cheap option. Where? everywhere. I put it on my mattress and closed it with an anti-bed bug cover. I put it in all the baseboards, basically, any place where you know they stay or crawl through, any small holes, etc. How much? Enough to infect the bed bugs. So I imagined they would pass through it, that's how it gets rid of them. And I put a thick line all around the house, furniture, etc. So the way it works is by getting the dust stuck in their exoskeleton. As soon as they touch it, they sign their death sentence. It also spreads from one to the other, so when they eventually go back to their nests, it infects the other ones too. It takes a few days. You will notice the little idiots walking around during daylight, walls, floors, and everywhere. Then little by little, you'll find them all ended around the house. Eventually, you won't see any more at all. It's a magical moment when this happens. Have fun. One of my college profs told the class about DE for use in getting rid of fleas. I believe it should be exactly the same for bedbugs if that's what you're looking to get rid of. You should protect yourself as it can be a long slash skin slash eye irritant. A dust mask, gloves, and goggles should do. If you're having to apply a lot of DE, you should use a filterless vacuum. Use food grade DE only. For carpet, use a flour sifter or something similar to sprinkle an even thin layer around the perimeter. Or the entire carpet if it's located somewhere that can be left alone for a day or two. Once it has sat for a while, vacuum it up. If you're able, leave some of the powder under the edges of the carpet. Other surfaces. Again, dust a thin layer on the surfaces or around the furniture, etc. That you want and then vacuum or wipe it clean. It's recommended you do this along floorboards and around furniture legs. For pet ectoparasites, rub the powder into their fur and leave it to sit. It will likely dry their skin, so afterward you may want to apply a pet safe conditioner. For pet endoparasites, mix well an appropriate amount into their food daily for at least a month. The amount you use will depend on your pet's weight. If you give it a Google, you should be able to find the amount that is right for your fur buddy. Story 9. Small human contact with people we pass by in life. Keeps me centered and stops the shyness of meeting new people. Making eye contact, smiling and saying nice or funny things to strangers. Occasionally someone blanks you, but the vast majority of times it starts a little convo. A little bit of human contact. You never know. Perhaps you are the first person that day who has acknowledged their existence. Simple examples. Saying good morning to the people at the bus stop. I said, choices. To someone standing looking at a display in the supermarket a short while ago. They laughed and I laughed a little too. Small human contact. Little interactions with people can really make you feel good. Plus, you probably brighten their day too. Want to know how to brighten mine? Leave a like in this video and subscribe to the channel. Story 10. It's nice to go into a doctor's office and simply get healed. You walk in with a debilitating condition and you walk out normally. That has only happened to me once. I had positional vertigo, which means that I would get vertigo when I experienced certain changes in position. When I laid down in bed, the room would start spinning badly. 
Eventually, it would settle down. Then later, I would get up to go to the bathroom and end up crashing sideways into a wall. Because the same extreme dizziness took hold when I got up also. It was the changes in position that caused it. Turns out this is caused by calcium deposits in your inner ear. There's a set of maneuvers that a trained medical professional can do, which will, step by step, move these calcium deposits out of your inner ear and miraculously, the symptoms go away as soon as this is done successfully. Story 11. Use dice to make decisions when there doesn't seem to be one right away in sight, even after all the pros and cons. But since it's not a coin, you can expand on options with compromises. It's way less freaking stressful. Also, if you're like, no, not that. The process forces you to reconcile what your preference really is. I also used tarot to figure out what my instincts are. In the scientific sense, it's just common symbols that you apply meaning to, but can be useful to draw out your buried thoughts and feelings with how you interpret the symbols. The part people forget about flipping a coin is that it doesn't matter what side it ends up on. By the time it's on its way down, you usually know which outcome you actually want. Go with that. Probably the same with dice. Story 12. Locating underground utilities, cat fee cokes, and power at least, but making two divining rods out of solid copper ground wire. Take two roughly 40-inch pieces of 6AWG, solid, non-insulated wire, make a 90-degree bend in each piece about 8 inches from one end to create L-shapes. Hold the short segments, one in each hand, spin them in your hands a few times, and then hold the long segments pointing away from you, parallel to the ground and to each other, like aiming two long fake guns. Walk across the general area where the underground lines should be, going perpendicular to them. The two copper divining rods in your hand will rotate toward each other and line up directly over the underground wires. I was sure the two guys who showed me the trick were trolling me hard until I actually tried it. Story 13. Drinking hot gelatin to stop your period. I have one of those Nexplan on birth control implants, and sometimes it causes periods that last a very long time. I did a lot of research into how to stop my period and got suggestions ranging from eating a spoonful of coconut oil to taking a bunch of ibuprofen. The gelatin thing was the only thing that seemed to make any difference at all. Apparently, gelatin is good for other things too, like irritable stomach and achy joints. I don't know why it works, but it's amazing. I usually mix a tablespoon of dry gelatin with stevia and lime juice and blend it with hot water. Tastes like warm lime jello. Story 14. I work in the utility industry and some old timers have a trick using what they call witch wands. And it blows my mind that it works. If looking for an underground pipe that's not marked is when you use the witch wands. You take two thin pieces of copper wire and bend them into a couple of L's. You lightly hold the shorter end with the longer end parallel to the ground. As you walk by the underground pipe, you're looking for the witch wands will turn and face each other. I've seen it work and it blows my mind. Story 15. Hard water spots or lime scale everywhere on and around my kitchen sink. I oversprayed a 50-50 mix of rubbing alcohol and vinegar on it accidentally and found when wiping that it cleaned better than anything that I've ever spent all of that money on. Ever. Still can't get over it. I have bought every noxious chemical on the market to clean this stuff and a blend of cheap household chemicals that I was using on a plant that was infested with bugs turns out to be the best and cheapest cleanser that I could ever have bought. It works great in the bathroom too. Ketchup also works great and because it's thicker it's a lot easier to use than liquids. Story 16. When I was in college, my cafeteria would always close at like 7 every night. Crazy, I know. As a lazy college student with no car, I frequently missed the cafeteria's open hours at night. So I resorted to DoorDash and pizza delivery to sustain me until the next day. I also didn't have a lot of money, so I'd sometimes go hungry rather than spend the $12 to get some small meal delivered. Thanks, DoorDash. One day when ordering pizza from Papa John's, I looked up specials and codes to try to lessen the hit in my debit card. I tried them and, as usual, they all didn't work. Except for one. It's a code I still remember to this day. MLM 50. My days of starving were over. 50% off your whole order, and it could be combined with other offers? I think I got pizzas delivered for $6 the whole time I was in college. The delivery drivers and I were on first-name basis, and while they thought I was a man with immense riches, I was but a con man. A legal, money-saving con man. It felt like a robbery. So if any of you poor souls reading this are still starving in Nashville, try this code. May my prior fortunes aid your stomachs in future sustenance. Story 17. No one will believe this, but here goes. Grandpa taught me this trick. Have someone sit in a chair, four people make an X with the index fingers of both hands, put one X under each armpit and knee. This is to show that you cannot raise a person that way. Now the trick. One person places the left hand on the seated person's head, each other person places their left hand in a stack on top of the first hand, they do the same thing with the right hand, in the same order. The person whose hand is on top takes his hand off, when you feel the hand above yours come off, take your hand off. When all hands are off, make the X and lift the person off the chair in the same way you tried before. Now they are easy to lift. Grandpa said he tried it with three fellow workers who were trying to put a transformer into a truck and they almost threw the transformer it raised so easily. I have no explanation, but I've seen it work countless times. Story 18. Staring at someone with a blank expression and saying nothing is the strongest psychological warfare tactic known to man. There is nothing you can say that will make a person feel fear. I don't care how smart you are, there's nothing clever or witty that will make an angry person back off. You're just a barking chihuahua. But when someone is barking at you, just lock eyes and say nothing. 
You can blink, but don't divert your gaze to anyone else. And for the love of God, make sure your mouth is closed, you ape. Oh, and no flinching. On the rare occasion, they don't freak out and back off. Be prepared to throw down the instant they twitch. They're not going to hit you. The only defense they have against a dead stare is to break your confidence, and flinching makes you look scared. When you're staring at them, the only thing on your mind is preparing yourself to actually punch, not flinch, when they twitch at you. But 99% of the time, it works 100% of the time. You're never going to have to punch, you just have to know that you will. Story 19 Back when Pokemon Sun was first released, people were trying to figure out where to catch a sea urchin. My brother, who wanted it, looked it up online and people were claiming, if you damage X a lot but don't faint it, then it could spawn Y. There was very little coverage over the game because of how early we got it, and I instantly called BS to that because I fell for dumb cheats like that back in the day. Y'all remember those infamous cheats? Like if you beat Smash Brothers with every character 10 times you unlock Sonic? That's exactly what I wanted my brother to avoid. And the in-game Pokedex listed it appearing in a specific area and told him to just grind for it there. Two to three hours later, he almost gave up until he just wanted to try the trick out. And lo and behold, it worked. Thinking it was just luck, I tried it a few times and got it every time. Eventually, when people started uploading vids and whatnot, this method of catching Pokemon was actually a gimmick that was supposed to be used to catch specific Pokemon. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy Weirdest Facts in the World. Story 3 was crazy. See you in that video.